Um, so we all know uh, uh, the trabeculectomy remained the most uh, commonly performed surgical intervention for glaucoma, but the use of glaucoma drainage device is on the rise. Uh, especially for the patients with a secondary glaucoma or high-risk patient. Um, the amount of glaucoma, just like uh, Dr. Net, uh, uh, we said, uh, it's uh, commonly used and uh, it's with a unidirection valve. Uh, it has a better safety profile compared to other type of glaucoma drainage system. Um, however, there's a two, I think, the main drawbacks with the uh, almond valve uh, plate. One is the high rate of a hypertension phase. The other is a limited uh, long-term outcome, uh, which uh, I want to share with you our experience and how to overcome those two problems. Um, so hypertensive phase, we know if you down the almond valve, it may uh, uh, happen up to 50% of patients, uh, pediatric patients. Um, so their study shows how to avoid this. One is to use early use aqueous uh, suppression medications, such as uh, uh, Timolo or Dorzolamide, uh, or combination of this, or uh, uh, Brimonidine. So there's two studies on this. And both of them shows uh, early use of uh, uh, aqueous suppression uh, when the pressure greater than 10 millimercury during the early post-op period can significantly decrease hypertensive phase. So uh, even so, we think in the, in the uh, Iran paper, uh, the hypertensive phase still has been reported about 25%. And another problem uh, we want to improve with almond valve is the long-term uh, outcome. Uh, so we all heard about the ABC study, uh, which is a national uh, study to talk about the five years uh, treatment outcome, uh, compare almond versus Barwell. Uh, this is their definition of the failure, and then the report about five years, uh, the failure rate is, could be about 44.7%. So how can we, the question we're asking is how can we maintain the safety feature of the almond valve, which we really all like it, but also overcome the drawbacks. Um, so we, then we thought about the, our old friends of mitomycin, because uh, nowadays nearly everybody uses mitomycin in the trabeculectomy. So how about the with almond valve? Uh, there's at least two papers published uh, talk, uh, discuss interoperative use of mitomycin alone, and then uh, the result is not promising. That means uh, if we only use intraoperative mitomycin alone, it does not increase short or intermediate term uh, success rate of almond valve implantation. So then most of the patients give up at this point to say it doesn't help. Uh, however, if you look uh, more close about, closely about their study, you, you can say uh, the study did show a significantly uh, uh, reduction in the pressure at uh, seven days, which is one week, and then two weeks of a post-op uh, period time. So we're thinking, is that maybe uh, uh, only intraoperatively use mitomycin alone is not enough? Uh, maybe we need to use more than that. So why is that? And we're thinking different from trabeculectomy. Uh, we actually place a plate on the surface of the eyeball, and then the almond valve plate may serve as a constant stimulus as a foreign body, which may overcome the antifibrotic uh, effect from a single intraoperative mitomycin use. That means not only intraoperative use mitomycin, we may consider is a possible post-op uh, uh, applica application of a mitomycin may improve long-term surgical outcome. So we're talking about a combination of intraoperative and post-op mitomycin use. So uh, this uh, kind of research has been ongoing at UCSF for more, for more than almost 20 years. It started with Dr. Alvarado. Uh, this paper was published in 1990s, and uh, he started with using uh, intraoperative mitomycin and uh, adjunctive post-op 5-fluorouracil uh, with almond valve and then uh, with uh, seven years of follow-up. Uh, that this is a, his a d definition of a failure in the study, which is quite similar as ABC study or any other national large-scale studies. 
and then uh, the, the uh, promising result is by five years. In his study, he reported accumulated success rate, uh, if it's Amenval alone, is about 72%. If you combined with, uh, uh, sorry, if you combined with the FICO, it's about uh, 72%. Uh, if 84%, if you Amenval alone, is a 72%. So it's a significantly better uh, than uh, the 55% reported at ABC study. Uh, so every, every time when we use uh, antifibrotic agent, we worry about the tube erosion, complications, infections. So within their five years uh, 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 follow-up, and then they find that the tube e exposure rate is about 1.5%, which is quite within the range of other large-scale national studies. So then we're, uh, in, in Dr. Alvarado's study, they used a post-op 5-FU injection. During that study, they have a five post-op 5-FU injections. So that means they require a patient come in weekly for five weeks in a row. Uh, we think that's maybe too much for the patient, especially in the area we don't have good follow-ups. So then we ask the question, can we decrease the number of post-op injection uh, by, combined, by introducing mitomycin instead of just 5 f u alone. So, so we did a, a small study here. It's all resident performed almond valve glaucoma at the San Francisco VA hospital. It's a retrospective study about the 41 patients. So for all the patients, we have an intraoperative mitomycin use. We also have a post-op combination of uh, uh, 5 f u and the mitomycin. And we find out uh, uh, this, uh, with uh, mitomycin group injection, uh, uh, with definition of a success about 21%, we have success rate of 86% by one year uh, versus 58% without injection. And then the complication rate are comparable between uh, uh, both groups. Uh, I, we know it's a short uh, study. Uh, but uh, at least the result is promising. So I just show you uh, like three examples in my clinic. Uh, this patient is 80 years old, the status post cornea transplant. Uh, he received the intraoperative and the post op mitomycin injection uh, two years ago. Uh, and then the, in the right eye, baseline pressure, pressure is eight, and uh, without the uh, medication. Uh, this is a young boy, 14 years old, that has uveitic glaucoma. He also received the intra and the postoperative mitomycin. Uh, visions baseline pressure 14 with uh, a use of cosopt uh, dorzolamide timolol. Uh, this is a 60 years old, the primary open angle glaucoma uh, in the right eye. Uh, baseline pressure, this is a two years after surgery, pressure is eight without the uh, uh, medications. So uh, for myself, I feel like over 200 patients over the past five years, is only two patients has a tube erosion, two patients has endophthalmitis, but one has a bilateral bacterial conjunctivitis at a skilled nursing facility. Uh, the second patient has an immune uh, uh, suppression condition. Um, so here, this is our current regimen I want to share with you. Uh, we use intraoperative mitomycin uh, injection, uh, 0.4 milligram ml for 0.1 ml. I will show you a video quickly how we're doing this. And the post-op injection for mitomycin is at one week and one month, uh, same concentration, and, and also for 0.1 ml. Uh, we don't do the injection if the pressure is very low or, or if a patient has choroidal detachment or if there's a shallow chambers or uh, uh, chamber reactions. Uh, we think the timing of the injection is critical because we want to, uh, the injection occurs before the dense capsule formed. Uh, we always say the mitomycin is not to dissolve the scar tissue, it's to prevent the scar tissue. Um, so here's the small video. So uh, you can do the mitomycin injection either at the beginning of the surgery or after the surgery. So here's what we do this. Uh, by the end of the surgery, we closed everything. We did the mitomycin injection uh, over the plate uh, by the end of the case right here. Uh, and afterwards, we just rinse the eye very well. Uh, sometimes, depending on if you, it's a topical case or block case, if it's a topical case, it will be ideal to give a patient an anesthetic injection first. Uh, here's the quick video about the postdoc uh, mitomycin injection in the clinic. So remember, we do it at one week and one month uh, uh, afterwards. So this is a gentleman. Firstly, we give uh, proparokine eye drops, so uh, numb the eye, 
and then we apply with Q-tip of a 4% lidocaine. We really, really want to numb the area very well. You can tell this is African-American. Even at one week, there is uh, uh, the conjunctiva is very uh, injected, and that means the scar tissue try to form around this area. So we don't want that to happen. So we actually use Q-tip four times with the 4% lidocaine, really want to numb this area. And afterwards, we uh, inject a subconjunctiva 2% or 1% of lidocaine over the plate. So the, the key is the injection site is over the plate, not at the limbus, because you want to prevent the scar around the plate. So here's a, a, a lidocaine, either 1% or 2% uh, subconjunctiva. So you make a, a blister here, elevated the conjunctiva. So this way, the patient will be numbed very well. Uh, afterwards, then we do the mitomycin injection. Here we are, uh, injected into the uh, blister we created with the lidocaine. And afterwards, we rinse the eye very well, uh, so then patient will not feel uh, irritated. Um, so uh, the, just want to repeat the key points of injection. Uh, it should be over the plate. Uh, that's number one. Number two, we need to numb the area very well because mitomycin injection is painful uh, during the clinic. Number three, we need to rinse that very well, otherwise patient may feel irritation. Uh, I want to uh, remind pa uh, uh, everyone just be cautious of a mitomycin application when we deal with the patients with uveitis uh, or uh, has immune suppressions uh, because we worry about the infection and hypotony. Um, so then the, the finally, like last two slides, is there any role of a mitomycin with tube shunt surgery? We think that our, all of our retrospective data definitely support it. Uh, we're currently doing a randomized clinical trial, uh, and uh, we try to compare uh, uh, if mitomycin can help us control the hypertensive phase and what's the long-term outcome of this. So those are all the centers uh, currently recruiting the patient, and hopefully we can have some results presented to everyone in the future. Thank you.